All right, welcome. Little Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be your Tuesday sit rep, 11.30 a.m. on July 6th. As you can hear, I kid you not, the second I decided to go live, uh, the dog started barking. So apologize for that up front, but uh, I have a 14-week-old uh, at my feet, and so that is what we get sometimes. So uh, before we get started, just make sure you hit the, uh, the like, subscribe, and the bell for notification if you guys are already on YouTube, because from time to time they will... Uh, unlike you and unsubscribe you and uh, that's what they do best so uh, just make sure that stuff is hit and then also for those over on Facebook and on Instagram uh, I am now over on that side so if you want to just pop in and say hello and uh, hit like and follow over on those uh, you'll be able to get uh, some same stuff coming from you uh, as we do over in the YouTube side so uh, also we'll have other content on there as well but uh, and those uh, monkeys that are in the lounge right now i will uh, if you just hang on after this i'll be in the lounge with you guys as we chat live uh and for those that are following me on uh, patreon i thank you much love for your support all right so without further ado let me uh get over to the board that we are looking at today and so right now we're sitting about 293 up and uh looks like we got a lot of traffic that's actually moving out due to weather now we're going to look closer at this storm here in just a minute but i was watching these and they were stacked up. These are all P8s actually running across the middle of the country, more than likely headed into probably uh, Carswell Air Force Base over here in Fort Worth, or, uh, and then you got some fighters out as well. You can see just south of those. Uh, but more than likely, that's probably where they're heading, I would imagine. But we got a couple other two ships uh, as well. So we'll get in and look a little closer to the board here in just a second. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the schedule. And so, uh, for Tuesday, looks like I uh, put his pants on around 10.30 a.m. and uh, wraps up around 3.15 today. And so as you can tell, this seems to be the hot topic and they just will not let it go. doesn't matter regardless of uh, what's going on in the world, uh, just complete uh, distraction. So there we have that. Uh, but again, looks like it's going to be a long day for, for the, uh, the old man in the senior living center. And so... Uh, oh well, hey, it's uh, the way I look at it. The less hours he works, the less damage he can do. So let's get over here and look at the, the weather map and some of the TFRs that we have going on right now. So this is on the docket for tomorrow. So it looks like uh, we've got uh, VIP headed into the Chicago, uh, Illinois general area and up here by Crystal Lake and then over here in uh, in this general area. So you got Chicago here, but um, I don't know who that is. That may be flashbang, but I'm not totally sure. And, uh, but then if we get down here, let me just double check. I think that's probably going to be, yeah, it's air show. Mercy season air shows. Those will probably run off the board now that we've been past the July 4th weekend. But uh, all these little funky looking triangles that you see in here, these are going to be space operations. Not sure what they have going on. Uh, I see those from time to time, but you can see them scattered throughout the panhandle and then right here along in that general area as well. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, you can see we've got uh, this tropical system that's going to be rolling right up through the middle of Florida and looks to be headed up the East Coast. And so it looks more likely a rain event, but that uh, that's why you've got aircraft scrambling out of the area. And we'll get closer. We'll look at that here in just a second. But the reason they move those aircraft, I mean, as you know, these planes fly in weather. They're, they're in storms and wind and all kinds of different things. So that is not what affects them. What affects them is the debris, okay? And so if you get just uh, 30, 40 mile an hour winds and you've got something that's flying in the air uh, that is a, a foreign object, right? Uh, that can actually get into the engine inlets. It can, even though they have those covered if they're staying there, but... Uh, you know, it can just, it can ding surfaces and those surfaces, you get a small ding like that. And then when you're flying, uh, you know, a little hole can become a big problem uh, in a leading edge surface. So that's why they do that. And so they just, you know, as a, a precaution, they fly out of the area just in general. So it, it uh, you know, everything else that's there will go in a hangar and, um, and it'll be strapped down, you know, but, um, and then they put the engine covers on and all the other stuff if they're staying but for the most part they try to get them out of the area so that they're not uh, impacted by it so uh, all of these little red circles and dots with the exception of that little dude right there are going to be fires and so we are entering uh, fire season we've got a uh, exceptionally dry season ahead of us and so you can see lots of fires going on i would imagine that this right here will increase as 
we go forward, okay? Uh, these boxes up here that are different colors, these are gonna be power outages. So you can see this one here has got, um, looks like 700 folks in, uh, have been impacted. Uh, not a lot, I, I imagine if that goes red, that's when it becomes a bigger problem, but that darker shade, uh, the darker the shade, the, the more people that are affected by the power outage, okay? All right, so there is that. Not much other than this VIP thing going on here. We still got the, the standing um, TFR that's over the, the Senior Living Center, the brown zone, okay? And um, everything else looks to be normal. The stuff along the border, it's always been there. Same thing here along Tijuana uh, in that general area. So uh, they still, for some crazy reason, right here, this is a search and rescue. And I don't know why that's just <laughs> still there. I don't, I don't know if they're just doing operations in the area or what's going on, but but um, there is that, okay? So let's back out of this. Let's get over to the volcanic ash alerts real fast. Now, this is uh, one we watch on a pretty regular basis that uh, is always spewing. So if we kind of get in a little closer, actually, I'll just click on it. You guys can see. Looks like uh, we had an eruption that just happened, and uh, there'll be a, a further advisory uh, as they detect ash on the uh, satellite imagery. So that looks like that one's pretty active. Now this one here, what happens is these things will spew a little bit of ash. You can see the different alerts here, okay? Um, but they're also, they're saying this is a possible uh, eruption, so they're keeping a, a closer eye on it also. But uh, what happens is these, the reason they're, they're separated from where the volcano actually is, the physical volcano, is because that's a, an ash cloud, okay? Same thing with this. So they, they detect those and they'll just put out that box so that people know you know, uh, not to fly into that area, mainly on the elevation, right? So whatever that altitude is, uh, they want to make sure that they're they're free and clear, okay? And then the black box is a little more imminent, I believe, right? That's really close to it. All right, so it looks like we've got that one spewing. And then let's get over to uh, Central America. Now, this is Fuego. And I will tell you, uh, they're saying now, you guys watched my monkey minute from earlier uh, or actually from last Wednesday, we actually talked about some of the volcanic activity going on in Costa Rica and the fact that Rincon is now one they're keeping an eye on because it's spewing gas. Uh, so you won't see that on here because it's not an ash producer, uh, but you will see it uh, in my monkey minute because they're saying that this uh, Costa Rica area, Central America area, they think it's gonna be more active than it's been since the 1990s. So there's uh, this is gonna be an increased um, I would imagine increased activity we'll be watching. So that again is Fuego. Uh, Rincon is up in, um, that's gonna be over in another the other area. That's It's about 200 kilometers away from San Jose, which is the capital of Costa Rica. Okay, and now if we get down here into Southern um, or South America, uh, we've got Ruiz still spewing, Sanjay still doing the same thing. Now this one uh, has been really producing a lot of ash. So this is, Kind of concerning if you think about the ash fallout, what that can do to the climate and to the to the actual uh, you know environment around it. So people that have crops or food sources in that general area are probably getting hosed up right now, and that is going to be our main ones. The one in Africa settled down. The ones up in Iceland are probably producing lava and not ash, so they're not on here. Okay. All right. Now let's get over to uh, Guantanamo Bay. And uh, I will tell you, it looks like we've got two birds inbound right now. Now, this one is coming out of uh, St. Paul, all right? Now, that's going to be a sun country, more than likely, that 7-3, uh, well, maybe. Not totally sure. I would say my gut is that that's going to be troops. But when we start looking, that may not be troops. And I'm going to show you why here, okay? Uh, if you have noticed... Uh, in the news, now this is uh, up in Minnesota, right? 17 men charged with human trafficking operation. Now this just popped uh, on, that's actually, this is an older video and article right here, but um, but this just popped a couple days ago, okay? And so the thing that I wanna just point out as we kind of go across that is there are mass amounts of human trafficking being arrested right now mass amounts. If you go in and just do a new search for human trafficking arrest, you're going to be shocked at the at the level of of information that's just popped up out there within the last, you know, 5 to 7 days. 
And so this actually could be related to that. So this could be those 17 headed, headed uh, down to the spa, okay? I'm fairly confident, and the reason I say that is because as I've been tracking these flights for over two years now, as I watch the flights come in, they are closely related to DOJ releases or uh, Homeland Security or whatever it may be as it relates to human trafficking arrests and busts, okay? Now, another one as we look at, here's one here. This just took place, but uh, resulted in 82 people arrest, arrested and 31 rescued. Now, this one just popped. This is July 2nd, so this was just on the backside of last, last week. Uh, but you're going to notice Missouri and Kansas, okay? So uh, that's Homeland Security, and uh, they are taking people down. And I'm telling you, I'm pretty, like I said, I'm pretty confident that the flights that we see coming in, that is what we're looking at. So this tied to that other article I just showed you where we had 17 people arrested, that actually could be uh, the perp walk, right? And so these folks may be going down to the spa, okay? Could happen to better people. And, uh, but anyway, I don't have a seating chart and I know that there are some folks out there that follow me that, that can probably get their hands on it. So if you wanna look at it and send it to me, we can take a, take a gander and see if we've got any kind of uh, similar seating arrangements that we've had on some of the other United flights, but definitely an uptick. Now, the trick will be, as I get over here in a second, we look at the other side of the board for out, this outbound flight to see whether or not uh, it's going to a military base. If it is, doesn't mean it's, it's troops coming in. It could be prisoners inbound and they're utilizing a flight to pull people outbound. You know, it just works out like that sometimes. All right, let me back up. And then also notice that we've got this one just ahead of it. That's our little uh, N329MC, right? That's gonna be that ACED aviation. And uh, again, uh, definitely a white hat operation. And so it looks to me like we've got uh, uh, quite a bit of activity going on at the spa as it relates to human traffickers, okay? Now, here's another one coming out of Jacksonville. That's 2578. Now, they this one has been popping on and off the board pretty regularly. We'll take a closer look at that, I am sure. Uh, now, my understanding is they've, they've disabled our ability to look at the, the seating on their website, okay? Not sure if that's accurate or not, but that's what I heard. And so, wouldn't be surprised. They probably don't want you looking at it, especially uh, with me calling them out on, you know, seating configs and things like that. So, now this one right here, Delta Airlines 8820, is definitely gonna be a troop rotation. Uh, and I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, this one out of Charleston, that's Airborne Express. That's gonna be a, just a supply run. That one out of Jacksonville. Now, this is similar to the, it's the same Sun Country Airlines. Um, uh, that's gonna be a charter service. And those guys are, uh, that's gonna be your Uber for your Legal Eagles coming down out of um, Jacksonville Naval Air Station, okay? Those are, that's your regular Friday deal. So, all right, let's get over here to departures. And I just wanna show you on the Delta Airlines, see that one went to Biggs Air Force, uh, Army Air, uh, sorry, not Air Force, Biggs Army Airfield, and um, over to Fort Bliss. And so that is, uh, that's why I say that's gonna be troop rotation, okay. Okay, now let me look just real fast on scheduled departures and let's see if we can get some eyes on where this is going from here. All right, so that looks like that's just a round robin back to Jacksonville that's coming in. I don't see the Sun Country on there just yet. Yeah, I'm not seeing the other Sun Country outbound. So we'll keep an eye on that and see what it does. That's, uh, that's kind of an interesting because it's uh, not showing. All right, uh, okay, now let's get over to a couple of the flights we're looking at as it relates to the Guantanamo Bay activity, okay? Now this is 301 AZ. This one's rolling out of Teterboro down to um, Rockland, Maine, and uh, you'll notice that one's about 21 hours ago. And one of the things I wanted to point out is notice that this thing is headed over to uh, right here, over to the Bahamas. Okay. Now I think that is one of our shakedown locations, and um, we'll keep an eye on that one. Now also notice New Bedford. Uh, that was on Wednesday the 30th, so last week. Now. The only reason I'm pointing that out, maybe nothing, uh, but I will tell you that New Bedford is the location where Maxwell was arrested, okay? And so just uh, keep that in mind, all right? Not that I say she's there by any means. I think she's already at the spa, but I'm just saying 
could have been something else going on up there too. So uh, just interesting that it would show up there, okay? But uh, you can see that bad dude uh, has been back and forth from, from the shakedown location. And so typically when I see those, in the past when I was looking at that, we would see an increase in activity that would take place down in the Bahamas, uh, Kings and Jamaica, a lot of the, the off, just right off the coast of Florida, relatively close. Uh, we'd see a lot of flight activity there, and then we'd see a flurry of aircraft coming into the spa shortly thereafter, and then some type of a news article that said something about arrest taking place, okay? And so that typically tells me that people are being, they're getting a shakedown out of one of these locations, they're giving up names, and then more people are getting arrested. And so uh, it's a good thing, all right? Hey, and let me tell you, as long as these scumbags are getting taken down and going to the spa, Oh man, God bless them. I'm, I'm, I have more power to the white hats for taking these guys down because uh, uh, these people are, are just, like I said, they're, they're the things that they do. And, you know, you're talking about kids and women and, and even males. It's, uh, you know, for human trafficking, they don't discriminate and um, it's pretty bad. So uh, the more we can get off the street, the better things are. All right. So uh, 302 AZ, this is another one. Now that landed 24 minutes ago. Now notice Nashville, right? Where did we just see Nashville? Uh, I want to say it was one of these. Let me get down here to this other article. Uh, that was Texas, and this one was Minnesota. But I did see Metro Nashville. Oh, so wait a second here. So that is not Minnesota. That is Metro Nashville Police Department. All right, now that's making sense. So that's not Minneapolis. Still doesn't mean there's not one. I think I may have seen that and didn't pull it up. So uh, who would have known the MMPD would have been <laughs> Nashville? Unless you're in Nashville, then you'd recognize that. So, uh, but that said, let's get back to it. You can see I do some of this stuff on the fly. So apologies, but we got clarity before we got out. So that's a good thing. All right. But here you go. Look at this one coming right out of Nashville. That's today uh, headed to Tallahassee. No telling what they're doing there, but uh, I would not be surprised. Yeah, it's going to Lauderdale, which again, that's our spot, right? So between down here at uh, Opelika and right here in Fort Lauderdale, um, I believe that is kind of a, a staging area before they go over to the spa, okay? Or to one of the other outer islands where they are um, getting the shakedown, okay? So interesting. Okay, so then that takes us back over here to this sun country bird that's, that is uh, actually en route uh, then I don't have an answer for that. So we'll have to figure out, we'll watch this one. That could be troops coming in, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep a track on that and see where it goes from there. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, it's amazing how you just kind of find things that, uh, you, you glaze over and then you have to stop, pump the brakes for a minute, look back at it and go, Oh, wait a minute. So that does make sense. And so now we've got the Nashville connection, you know, right there to one of our spa birds. Okay. Now this one, 329MC, we're just looking at that currently en route to Guantanamo Bay. And uh, then it looks like it heads back to Lauderdale shortly after that, all right? Uh, let me see if I've got Opalaka on here as well. Just one of the things, oh, here's another thing too. Now this is just an observation. I don't have a lot of data to back it up, but I will tell you one of the things I found interesting is that I was watching some of the Gitmo birds, uh, which is the commander's flight, right? So you have uh, uh, the Gitmo 844 or 845 or whatever it may be. I was watching one of the Gitmo birds in the last week, uh, Key West Naval Air Station, on a pretty regular basis. There were a lot of little flights, and I can't find it anywhere in the flight logs, which tells you that that may be, um, may be worth watching, right? Uh, but I had eyes on it when it was actually taking place. But I will tell you, here we have... This is just a hop, skip, and a jump down the road from that location. So you've got some of these spa birds are actually heading into the Keys. And uh, if you remember just in the back, about three weeks ago, we actually had the DOJ bird uh, in 721AL that was down there, same location. And so I'm kind of wondering if we don't have something happening now, could we have, I mean, if you look at the Key, the key West location, and you get down here, of course, it's all covered up in weather right now. But, uh, you know, you get out here to this Naval Air Station and there is nothing out there. I mean, it's just a little base, not much around. So if you wanted a remote location, you don't have to fly all the way down to the tip of South America. You could easily land right here on this runway and be holding tribunals out here in Key West, you know, and nobody would know any differently. So 
Uh, just food for thought, all right? But uh, we'll continue to watch it. But I'm thinking why, you know, this base commander, I do see him go in and out of Jacksonville all the time. I see him go in and out of Lauderdale, which, again, one of our spots. Uh, but then, you know, recently he seems to be heading over to the um, Key West Naval Air Station a lot more. Okay. All right. Now, over to our Maxwell bird. And uh, now this one landed two hours, 50 minutes ago. Notice it's... Uh, headed up there into West Hampton uh, Beach in New York. Now, one of the things I will point out is, here it is, Opalaka, okay? And so this is one spot that we've been watching closely. Now, if you go back and look at this one, granted, it went all the way out to the West Coast, but then when it came out of Teterboro, Opalaka, 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 uh, and Opalaka, okay? And so uh, definitely, I think that's probably our alternate location, all right? All right, so that said, let's get over to XPL Honduras. And I wanna show you, we've got some increased activity as well. Every time I, I watch and I think, well, there's nothing going on, right? We've got these reach aircraft that rolled in. Those are gonna be supply runs. They happen every so often. They're not as frequent. Uh, I'm sure they have a tempo and a rhythm just like all the other locations. But, uh, but this one right here is gonna be a Bell 407. Okay, so if we go click on that one, you can see they use these locally, and what they do is they roll in and you know back and forth. So this is probably a prison location up in here, and uh, they're probably taking people to and from. Uh, and I would tell you, you do not want to be stuck in a prison down here in Honduras. XPL is a different thing, uh, but you start talking about uh, go go look up some of the the conditions and some of the things that are the you know articles that have been written about being being in prison in Honduras, and it's. Uh, it's not good. It'd be like being in Syria or one of those places. It's a third world country and, um, you know, the guards are all on the take and people getting beat down on a regular basis. So, again, the human traffickers couldn't have any better people. But uh, this one here is also, we've seen this before in 8BG. That is also going to be one of your little helos, if I remember correctly. And you can see it's the uh, same thing. Here's XPL Honduras and it looks to be headed up out here on the coastline. All right, now let me back up. Now this one is new in 867SL. Now this is uh, Iron Aviation LLC. So if you guys wanna do a little uh, recon and figure out who this company is, um, I would say go forth tenderly and um, don't dox anybody, but just uh, you know, take a look at it and see. You never know what you're gonna find. A lot of these are little shell companies and they probably end up tying into agencies, okay? but. Um, but this one is a little uh, King Air 200 twin engine uh, turboprop uh, rolling in and out of uh, Guatemala. All right. So there is that. And let's see, it was uh, actually inbound from Guatemala over to Honduras. Now, the thing I will point out is that notice it is one, it's a US registered company right here, uh, which is down behind me. And you can't see that. But uh, Iron Aviation LLC, that's a US registered company. And then that N number right there would indicate it's registered with the FAA, and that's a national number, so that's tied to a U.S. registry as well, okay? All right, so done with the prison stuff real fast. Uh, I'm going to pop over. I want to just show you guys. I was still have eyes on this helo that we had watched do some cinemography, um, some video stuff for a movie, okay, and which was uh, they were doing some things around D.C. Uh, those that are watching us for the first time, we actually caught this bad dude rolling out of DC up into the same area in Wilmington, Delaware, where uh, flashbang uh, goes on the weekends, okay? And so we were watching it. Now this activity right now, I just kind of pop in and look at it from you know time to time. This 4th of July activity, clearly they were watching fireworks along the, the canal, right? So he's probably just flying in and videoing uh, you know, some of the celebrations. And so that's what that looks like to me. All right. So nothing really to see there, but we continue to watch it. And uh, like I said, I think um, it was interesting. The fact that we had uh, had this dude up in this general area in addition to uh, the DC stuff. Okay. And I say that because we actually spoke with some one, we spoke with a pilot too. We spoke with uh, the movie studio, the DC footage they said was, uh, it had to do with actual um, uh, one of the Clinton, you know, impeachment things. Okay, there, there's a movie going on for that, and they they did a bunch of video stuff for that with the with the Hilo. 
Then the other one, when I asked about, well, what about the one going up to Wilmington? Uh, they were all like, yeah, don't know anything about that. So again, uh, you know, watching a movie, right? So just an interesting data point. So we'll continue to watch it, see if we get anything else that kind of uh, sparks our interest, okay? All right, now over to this one. I've been watching this a little closer because uh, after it flew over to Spain around the time that uh, uh, we had our, our M guy, uh, suicided himself then uh, this one actually kind of popped on a radar now I used to watch C101 back in the day and uh, that's going to be your director of Homeland Security this one is probably going to be your assistant director uh, but C202 is one of the planes that they use now I just want to point out as we get into the immigration segment of this that this bad dude landed an uh, hour and three minutes ago from DC down to Guatemala City so uh, Greece and the skids. We've already seen them at the border, uh, but now they're down here, uh, probably figuring out their next steps on how they're going to get people in because, you know, that's what we seem to be doing. So, uh, just a data point, but uh, again, uh, our government is all the way in on it. I doubt they're down there saying, please, please, you know, what can we do to stop you guys from sending all these, uh, you know, immigrants into our country? Uh, it's probably just the opposite of that, okay? All right, now let's get over here to the live board relative to the Swift Airs. Now, I'm just going to kind of go through some of these as I as I show you the locations, but I want to point out mainly the border towns so that you can see it. And then I've got three or four. We're going to kind of go into the details. Uh, but this is a live board happening right now, okay? And uh, you can see the the locations as these things kind of if you if you kind of scan over them a little bit or mouse over them. Sorry. You can see where they're going, but uh, this one looks to be headed down to, uh, that's Dominican Republic out of Miami. This one, uh, Las Vegas and uh, San Diego. Now, where is that headed from San Diego? That's headed down to Guadalajara. All right, so round robin, going to pick some folks up. Uh, this one again, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I've been noticing that one's coming back and forth a lot. Uh, this is Del Rio, Texas. That's a border town. Okay, headed into Alexandria. Now, one thing I will tell you I have noticed as I've been looking at these for the last several weeks, Alexandria in Louisiana seems to be one of the processing hubs. Uh, at first, it looked like it was San Antonio, which may still be, uh, but Alexandria is definitely a commonality uh, between a lot of these flights. Okay, so just... Um, Keep an eye on that. I, you know, if you're in that general area and you see some buses pull up and you want to get video, that's cool. Uh, just be mindful that uh, when it comes to this, if you're around an airport and you're videotaping stuff, that uh, you're going to probably draw some attention to yourself. So just be careful because, um, you know, you don't want to do that, right? Drawing attention to yourself in a good manner, that's cool. But uh, in a, and this, this is a Homeland Security, get people knocking on your door kind of thing. So just be, be cognizant of that and. Um, and uh, but if you do happen to see it, you know, people love to see what's going on there. All right. Uh, it could be inside the airport. Probably not. I imagine they've got them outside the airport, but uh, that's kind of uh, not a big airport. OK. All right. Uh, then we've got the Harrisburg down to Columbia um, or sorry, Columbus. This one, San Antonio. Again, that's processing Alexandria processing. And this one is coming out of Arizona, headed to East Texas, so Longview. And that, I think, is also kind of borderish. El Paso, definitely border, and McAllen border. Now, one other thing that I have noticed that is definitely suspect, and I don't know what's going on here. I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. But these flights seem to be going border town to border town, okay? And I'll show you that in just a minute as we get into them. But, uh, uh, you know, here doesn't make a lot of sense to me why they're doing that unless they are using the flights to separate. You know, let's say you had a whole, you know, flurry of folks show up at one border in El Paso and they're like, yeah, you came to the wrong, the wrong border. We're going to get you over to the other side so we can process you. Maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm this is just speculation. You'd have to have somebody down there actually seeing them. Now, my understanding is, and this, this, should be kind of a one we all kind of pay attention to but my understanding is that the video that was taken of in el paso that showed them on the border were all men getting on this flight and so that if that is the case uh, the tail number that they gave me and i'll show you that in just a second 
uh, makes you kind of wonder, you know, are they moving, you know, males down to one location and reprocessing them or are they separating them? There definitely seems to be some separation going on. So, uh, but anyway, here's that. Here's what I was talking about right here. So this one is actually El Paso headed down to uh, McAllen or, or McAllen to El Paso. Sorry, back and forth. So this is uh, headed from down here up to up to El Paso again. Uh, that has been a very regular flight. So you can see this thing back and forth, McAllen, McAllen, like see that this is what they're doing. All right. So seems to be a new tempo. Again, not sure what's going on, but uh, definitely suspect. And uh, you cannot tell me for one minute that uh, Governor Abbott doesn't know this is going on. Okay. 100%. This is in, this is in Texas. All right. Sitting on the other side of the border. This is in Texas. And their American flights. Okay, now back over to this one. I was looking at this earlier. This 430XA is one that actually is, and I want to show you the flights and where this thing has been. You see what I'm talking about. But here, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Uh, you can see right now this was over on this side of the cycle, headed back to my uh, probably Miami, if I had to guess. Or it's actually headed over to Dominican Republic, then to Miami. Okay. Now we used to see for a little while we were watching the. Uh, uh, Kalita Air doing that same route. Uh, this appears to be, I doubt this This is cargo, okay? This is probably people. Um, but that said, uh, that's Swift Air, not uh, Kaleta, all right? Now, check this out. As I go back and look at this, one's about smoking gun, Alexandria, Brownsville, Brownsville, El Paso, back and forth, right? El Paso, back and forth, right? Border, 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 uh, border, border, again, uh, El Paso to Brownsville, another border, border to Alexandria, processing. Okay, and then now it's just popped out of sequence. It's heading from Alexandria out to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Now, I don't know if they're taking immigrants out to Haiti. That's a different country. And so I'm not really sure. That's that's um, just a data point, I guess, for us to watch. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. But these right here, all the way from Friday to today, uh, definitely smoking gun all border town stuff okay all right now this is the last one that we were looking at this five in 531 au again swift air all right and uh, we get down actually let's see albuquerque new mexico to brownsville okay and so uh but again border town so it's taking them up looks like they round robin so they probably took a bunch of folks from here up to albuquerque uh but again alexandria so you're noticing uh, commonality there okay and as you kind of get down into it uh you can see everywhere they're taking them you got el paso to houston okay uh brownsville up to uh, long beach california so they are spreading people out all over the u.s folks that is your government and that is in my opinion you're bypassing our total uh, immigration system and process when you do that the biggest question is why okay that's when we all ought to all just be peeling the onion on. Why are they doing this? It makes no sense to me. Um, why, why is there a, a rush or an influx to process people into our country? Like, just, <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, okay? So, um, all right. Now, let's get over to the spy craft real fast. This is our five. 0577 and it looks like it's coming back now but it was rolling out doing the same thing over this jersey area again if you get into this little shoestring look remember that's a spy craft right there and uh you know they just seem to go over the same areas over and over uh, now i'm not sure really why now i know there is an army airfield up here i've talked with several people about it in the past and that does those operations out of that location and so are they doing some testing Maybe, uh, or are they tracking somebody along here? Because they also get out over the water, they do a different stuff, and then they head up in this general area as well. And um, don't know, can't put my thumb on it. We're just gonna watch it as a data point. I find it pretty interesting uh, to see, you know, when something pops, then we'll know. If nothing does pop, who knows? I don't know, but uh, all right. And then our sniffer, that's gonna be the last one we're gonna talk about a little bit. Now, this is activity from the other day, four days ago. Uh, out near Las Vegas. So this would have been uh, the 1st of July. 
And I just want to point out this is Vegas down here. And so they've rolled up into this general area. Now you can see uh, it looks like they were out scrambling for that for some reason. Now keep in mind that's a sniffer. And so they're doing air quality samples. And so you can see this is uh, the yellow line is your speed line. And then uh, the green line is going to be your altitude line. All right. And so it seemed like the big fluctu fluctuations were actually through the speed cycle. OK, so they seem to be uh, very little deviation, maybe maybe a thousand foot deviation. Normally we see big dips down with the green line, not so much the yellow line. But uh, but these guys will take air quality samples as they go. And uh, maybe there's something going on out there in the air they're, they're actually trying to grab. It could be uh, nuclear, it could be biological, chemical, could be anything really. Uh, you know, these sensors on that helo are pretty impressive. And so for those not familiar with the helicopter I'm talking about, I tend to show this from time to time. No, this is not Marine One, AKA the sniffer. Uh, this is gonna be in 411 DE. And so this thing has got cameras and sensors all around this this helicopter and uh, the pilot basically just goes in and just you know flies these routes and they just get these quality samples and then they, they sit there and analyze them so if somebody were to have a dirty bomb somewhere and detonate it this bad dude would be engaged uh, they've got several others it's not just this one uh, one of the others I think is still in modification that's 412 DE but the uh besides that there's actually going to be a, a cessna that they fly and uh, it doesn't fly that very often this seems to be the most active one so that's why i show it so all right let's get back over to our board real fast as we kind of delve into what we've got going on again uh we've got a tropical uh storm coming through just right up the heart of florida here and uh remember dirty side is on the on the right uh front quadrant okay so if you look at the track that's supposed to roll through, let me kind of pull this in a little little closer, uh, that dirty side is gonna be coming right over to Jacksonville Naval Air Station, it looks like, okay? So that's why they're moving those out. Uh, when you call it the dirty side, it's because um, it's because they are, that's the side that usually produces most of the tornadoes and, and, and bad weather in a hurricane, okay? And so uh, so you can see lots and lots of fighters basically bugging out uh, headed northbound and then if we get over here to this side we've got uh, p8 p8 and uh, you can see the p3s are now coming out of there as well and yeah it looks to me like yeah they're all headed into this is going to be carswell air force base so that one's on ground that's one of your p8s and they're all stacking up rolling in over here at carswell so uh, which is also uh, that's joint reserve base okay Okay, so that is the main thing it looks like. Uh, still got a lot of trainers up. These are all trainers, lawn darts, uh, a lot of pilots. Man, we are pumping pilots through schools. It is it's remarkable how many are at flying all the time. It's just crazy. Uh, this is going to be your AWACS Sentry right here. Uh, that's an E3. Um, it's got a little dome on the very top of it that, that basically will... Um, uh, air, just think of it, air traffic control. Okay, and so with all of the congestion and flights that are bolting out of out of uh, Jacksonville, they are probably helping or assisting, um, you know, the, the civilian air traffic control. All right, got a little two ship headed westbound. These are Reach aircraft, so that's going to be probably cargo and supplies. And then these are air refuelers. So it looks like we've got two a air refuel air refuelers up. Now that's going to be one of your spy bots. That's an R-135. Looks like it's just coming, just getting airborne, actually. Uh, we'll see where that one goes, if it's still on here in a minute. But uh, usually they'll run up in here and start doing routes, okay? But that's a spy craft, just FYI. And another air refueler. Lots of air refuelers up. Uh, that could be because we've got lots of aircraft coming out of Jacksonville, and so they, they may be doing some support, you know, coming out light and then doing a, a quick top off and then on to their destination. So, again, that's a two ship of air refuelers. Let me bug in a little closer. Let's make sure we got that. Yeah, that's a, it's like a DC-10 and then a, a tanker, which one right behind the other. All right. And... Okay, let me go over here real fast, get over the, the brown zone, see if we've got anything that kind of catches our eye. C-17s, handful of those, these are the reach birds. 
see coming inbound that's coming from overseas looks to be the same thing and that one's not right okay another tanker so air refueler that looks to be just kind of general area pretty low so he's definitely not doing air refueling probably doing touch and goes you know he's down at just below 2,000 feet so probably just doing touch and goes all right let's get over to just double check make sure I don't see anything else that catches my eye I don't think so San Diego looks like it's kind of busy right now but um, uh, that's gonna be Marine, Marine Corps bird and a couple trainers some EC 45 some H 60s we'll see 130 action a couple C 130s and then up here north and not really seeing much a lot of air refuelers up that's for sure let's see this looks to be now that is an a400 which is a french bird uh, as we kind of look at that now that one we were looking at yesterday and here's another one right here so those are uh french uh for those not familiar this is another that's a that's actually a pat aircraft all rolling out the same location i doubt they're rolling together more than likely not but coming out of vegas now those came inbound last night to vegas my first thought was there was a red flag. They may have just camped overnight there, uh, headed westbound. But that's like a, a combo. The A400 is very similar to uh, our C141s, which is an old platform, and a uh, C130. It's kind of like uh, they they did a you know a combo on both of those aircraft, did the best of everything, and made an airplane. It's a pretty impressive aircraft, actually. Very nice, um, high wing. Uh, but instead of the jet engines, it's got uh, the, the turboprops, okay? Kind of like a C-130, all right? But uh, these are French. Not uncommon to see the French birds in the United States. Um, we do a lot of what they call FMS, which is foreign military sales. And, uh, and then these guys also come in and participate in red flags and things like that, too. So, again, another... Uh, another bird now these I would imagine are probably going to tie back together They're just taking different routes if they're going across the drink this bad dude right here is giving them fuel to get all the way across the drink Okay, so that is going to be a French air refueler and you can see the little bee sting on the back here, right? That little refuel uh, That thing's tucked away in that photo, but um, but that's what they do They drop that little dude down and and uh, gas him up So that's probably going to get them across the drink if I had to guess so um, speaking of across the drink, let's get a little quick look left and don't see anything going on over Hawaii right now. Uh, we'll go off to the right. This, uh, let's see here, got an air refueler and a, um, a Navy bird. Looks like they're headed across the drink. Let's look at the UK in general and see if we see anything. Again, there's one of your little A400s. That one looks to be uh, another French military one. And that's coming out of, and I gotta fix that because let me just tell you, I can't read. Uh, let me go to light and all. All right, <laughs> it's all in Greek until I do that. So it's like that one's coming out of Cairo, General. Uh, it's in Egypt. So the French French bird rolling out of uh, out of that area. And let's see here, that's gonna be a little M28 that belongs to Jordan, and that is an Italian air refueler headed into well it's headed towards Israel okay and let me get over here real fast Let's see what we got more tankers up over the UAE and that is actually going to be a British air refueler looks like that one's actually inbound uh, coming out of Cyprus it looks like I think that's Cyprus let me just double check yeah it's Cyprus okay all right that folks is going to be it except for that one up there shiny objects all right yep all right so that's going to be our sit rep for today so listen um uh i'll be back on on friday we'll have more information as we kind of delve into what's going on with uh, guantanamo bay and this human trafficking with immigration and so continue to follow it um and uh we'll see you then so god bless monkey out
Check out the latest.